How do we calculate the sum of the first n counting numbers, 1 plus 2, and so on, all the way up to n? What's that equal to? It's a classic number theory problem, and the answer is a classic result. A lot of you are probably familiar with what this is equal to already. Big spoiler warning here. It's equal to n times the next counting number, n plus 1, divided by 2. Sorry if that's a little small, but don't want to take up too much room. Uh, so, I mean, this is really cool. For example, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 is equal to 4 times 5 divided by 2, which is 10. So why is this result true? Just the other day, I did a video showing a beautiful explanation of this result. So if you haven't seen that, go check that out. I'll leave a link down in the description. In today's video, we'll be proving this result using mathematical induction, which is a brilliant proof technique. So if you're not familiar with induction, this is a classic result to get your feet wet with induction, often one of the first results you'll prove using mathematical induction. Um, so if you're familiar with induction, which I hope you are, I definitely recommend uh, giving it a swing, proving this using induction before you watch the rest of this video. With that said, let's get on with it. As you may know, a uh, proof by induction begins with the basis step. In the basis step, we want to prove that our claim, our result, is true for the first number we're interested in. In this case, we're talking about counting numbers. So the first number we're interested in is n equals 1. We want to show that this equation holds uh, for n equals 1, the sum of the first one counting number. In this case, it's really simple. The basis step usually is really simple. We can pretty much just write this equation and check to make sure it's true. So what's the sum of the first one counting number? Well, it's just one. And then this equation evaluated at n equals one is one times one plus one divided by two, which is equal to one times one plus one, that's one times two, divided by two, twos cancel out, it's equal to one. We see it works, beautiful. That's it, that's the basis step. We've shown that our result is true for the first number we're interested in. Uh, it's a pretty boring uh, boring example of the result. Uh, just, just for fun, we could check n equals two as well. Let's just check that. It's not necessary for the proof, but let's just do it because it's fun. One plus two, the sum of the first two counting numbers, Clearly, that's equal to 3. Now, will our equation give that same result? Let's see. n equals 2, so that will be 2 times 2 plus 1, all over 2. 2's cancel out, we're left with 2 plus 1, which is equal to 3. Hey, look, it works. Beautiful. All right, on to the induction step. So, I think it's beautiful. It's, it's a really good analogy to think of proof by induction uh, as knocking over a set of dominoes. The basis step is proving that we can knock over the first domino. Now we're moving on to the induction step. In the induction step, we prove that any domino that gets knocked over will also knock over the next domino, which proves that the whole line of dominoes will be knocked over. It's really cool. If you're not familiar with induction or you're still kind of foggy on it, check out my video on it. I think it's one of my better lessons. I'll leave a link to it in the description. So, the induction step. We're gonna begin by assuming that our result holds for some value we're interested in. So we'll say there exists some natural number k, some k in the natural numbers, such that our equation is true. The sum of the first k natural numbers, 1 plus 2 all the way up to k, is equal to k times the next natural number, next counting number, whatever you like to call it, divided by 2. Then. We want to use this assumption, often called the inductive hypothesis, to show that our result is true for the next counting number, k plus 1. So we want to show that the sum of the first k plus 1 counting numbers is given by this expression, where n equals k plus 1. Keeping that in mind, what we want to end up with, the final expression we should end up with, where we'll be able to stop the proof, is showing that the sum of the first k plus 1 counting numbers is equal to this. So our final expression is going to look like k plus 1, that's our n, multiplied by k plus 1 plus 1, all divided by 2. And then I uh, put my 
hand on that. Let me just fill that back in because I rubbed it out a little bit. K plus one, all divided by two. So it's, it's often useful, you know, to keep your end goal in mind, write this down, see the expression we're actually trying to get to. Um, and it's gonna be pretty easy to get there. So let's just jump into it. I'll write in blue. These are so squeaky when you take the cap off and I take it off right next to the microphone. It's so loud. <laughs> so um, we should start naturally by looking at the sum we're interested in now. We're interested in the sum of the first k plus one counting numbers. So let's start there. One plus two and so on all the way up to plus k plus k plus one. The sum of the first counting numbers. We want to prove that this is equal to that. Now immediately we can see some substitution pretty easy here. I mean this isn't a fun thing to work with so if we could simplify it that would be nice and we can because in this sum is the sum of the first k counting numbers which we already assumed is equal to that. So we'll just pop it in there do some substitution. So this is equal to the sum of the first uh, k counting numbers which is k times k plus 1 divided by 2, and then we still got that plus k plus 1 at the end. We know, looking at the expression we want, that it has the form of two factors getting multiplied together and divided by 2. So right now we've got two terms being added together. If we could sort of turn that into two factors, that would be getting closer to our final solution. We see here that we could factor k plus 1 out of both terms. So that seems like a good idea. Let's try that. So we'll write this is equal to factoring out k plus 1. We've got our factor of k plus 1. And then what do we get when we factor k plus 1 out of this term? We're just left with k over 2. So that's k over 2. And then what about when we factor k plus 1 out of this term? Well, that's just 1. And if you multiply this by this, you will see that we end up with that. So that's all good. All right, now we're getting pretty close. We see we've got a factor of k plus 1, which is part of our final expression. So we think, okay, we're getting warmer there. Now what about this? Well, we want another factor of k plus 1 plus 1, which is k plus 2. What we've got here is k over 2, which is half of k, plus 1, which is half of 2. So if we just factor out a 1 half out of this expression, well, for starters, we'll get k plus 2, which is what we want, but then we'll also have a factor of 1 half, which is also what we want, and that will complete the proof. So let's see that in action. We're going to factor out 1 half out of this. Again, that's going to, factoring out 1 half is going to turn this into k, which is what we want, and it's going to turn this into 2, which is what we want, one plus one, that's two. Okay, so let's just do it. We've got our factor of k plus one, and then we factor out one half out of that. So that's one half. And then when we factor one half out of k over two, we're left with k. Factor one half out of one, we're left with two because there are two halves in one. And uh, then we can just rewrite this a little bit more. Um, clearly this is our final answer, right? k plus 1 times k plus 2, k plus 1 times k plus 2 times a half, which is the same thing as dividing by 2. Now we'll just rewrite it so it looks more like what we want it to look like. We've got k plus 1 times k plus 2, which is k plus 1 uh, plus 1. And then that's all getting multiplied by 1 half, which is the same as dividing by 2. Look at that. That's the proof. Pretty sweet. So really, uh, a really classic, simple example of an induction proof. Basis step is easy. Then we move on to the induction step. We take our inductive hypothesis and then we just, you know, move on to the next step, uh, the next counting number by adding k plus one. And then we just sort of kick it around a little bit, do some algebra until we end up with what we claimed it would be equal to. And, and then that completes the proof. So it's pretty sweet. It's a really beautiful result. The sum of the first n counting numbers is n.
times the next counting number, n plus 1, divided by 2. So I hope this video helped you understand this classic induction proof. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet.